Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. I notice it is now four past two. We are waiting for some of our presenters to get here so that we can start when everybody is on board. Um, if we could just give them a couple of minutes. And um, I hope all of you are having a wonderful Sabbath. Um, we will just give them two minutes or so, and then we start because we have just a few of our presenters with us and we want all of them to be on board before we start. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. It has been a wonderful six weeks. Um, we started with this series when we're looking at what do girls really want? And then we looked at what do the boys want? Then we looked at marriage is not a profession. And then we looked at these boys, they are lazy and cowards. And then we had two weeks of the fantasies versus the reality of marriage that the boys and girls seem to have before they get married. Today, our main purpose is just to bring everything together. Today is going to be different from how we've been doing it before. We want to be looking more at the things that jumped out for our presenters so our presenters are going to be giving us what I would call the core nuggets, the things that they would want to leave with you, the things that they think are more important than everything else that, that you may have gotten. Not that everything was not important, but just what the speakers feel is core for you guys. We're going to have this as a fairly short program because we're just wrapping things together. And normally when you're wrapping, wrapping things together, um, you don't want to take too much time about it. So we have had Elda Mtema, and I notice Elda Mtema is with us. We have had um, Uncle Ivan, and I think I've, Uncle Ivan is with us. We have had Dr. D, and Dr. D is with us. We have Dr. Alaisa, and Dr. Alaisa is here with us. We have had our elder, Elder Machando and Elder Machando is here with us. And with those people who are with us currently, we will start the program. Um, I will want to start with the ladies. I'm a lady and I, I like gentlemen who honor ladies. So I will start with the ladies. And I notice that Dr. Alaisa is ready to go. Dr. Alaisa, what is the message? that you would want to leave with the girls or with the boys or with both the boys and the girls? Thank you, Dr. Eliza.
Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the time that we've yet together for the past two weeks. Uh, these sessions were very interesting. So when we looked at the issues of what girls really want, to me, um, my take home message to the guys would be, um, it is important that you love someone the way she wants. Don't love your person the way your dad loved your mom or loves your mom. Love your girlfriend the way she wants. Uh, I used in that discussion, I used the um, analogy of a business where you're serving your customer in a relationship your customer is the person that you are in a relationship with. And for your business to succeed, you need to meet and exceed your customer expectation. So in your relationship, meet and exceed your girlfriend's expectation. Love you the way she wants, of course, within the core, the things that in a, in a relation, get married, the things that we should do in so exceed the expectations of your girlfriend. She wants affection. Show you the affection the way she wants. She wants time with you. Give you the time. And um, uh, do the things the way the girl wants. I think that way you will be happy if you exceed uh, the expectation in, the, in, in, in your relationship. And when it comes to the, to the girl child, to me, we when we spoke about marriage, uh, that marriage is not a is not a profession. Do not be pressured to get married. To get married, we all want to be married. We, I mean, society expects all of us, or that every girl at the end of it all, who is going to wear the white wedding gown. But do not be pressured. And do not settle for things that you do not want just because of societal pressure. You, uh, on your own, you are you, you are not you don't get validated uh, by marriage. You can live a full life even without being married. And if um, God wills that you get married, do not settle for junk. Do not settle for yeah for anything less than your your standard and expectations because you are being pressured to get married. To those who are, uh, we have maybe gone in years, you're already in your thirties. I still say that wait upon God. God does not operate in the confines of time. Uh, God exists outside time. And if he wills that you'll get married, you, you will get married. But don't lower your standards for the sake of getting married. Do the things that you can uh, now. Achieve your dreams. Achieve your goals. Go to school. Advance yourself uh, academically. Advance yourself in your career. And pray that God will go give you a God-fearing spouse. If the person is not God-fearing, uh, God don't settle for that. For the sake of you being married, you if you wait upon him, God is faithful. Marriage is a beautiful thing. And we are here to testify that marriage is a beautiful thing. And God has been blessing us in the in our marriages. Uh, and so it's possible for you to get a God-fearing person. Don't be pressured. And um, when it comes to fantasies, the fantasies that we have, about marriage, it's important that we have clear communication in, in our relationship. Communication is key. The things that I expect, there are so many things that we think, like the happily ever after notion, that we think all things will be rosy in marriage. But um, yes, rosy things are there, but even rosy of thorns. But we have to focus on the rosy things. Communication uh, on the rose, yes, on the flower part of the rose plant. Um, communication is key in the things that you expect, the things that you have been fantasizing. Some of our fantasies are not real. Um, so let's be re realistic. If you have things that you want your boyfriend to do for you when you get married, communicate 
it's important. I think communicate is the uh, lifeblood for any relationship. So communication is key. Communication in the things, that, in the way that you want to be loved, communication in the fantasies that you want to be uh, fulfilled. And there are certain key things that you see in your relationship. They will not, it, uh, a person won't just change miraculously in marriage because you ignore those things or you're saying that when we get married i'll change the person you'll do the things that I, that I want that would happen if you're seeing red flags now girl stop if you're seeing red flags now stop it won't change but may, may god bless you and may god give you god fearing partners and may our marriages will, for for those who get married may our marriages reflect the relationship that christ is the church yes with the church which is the intention of marriage, our marriages, if we are, to, we are going to get married, your marriage should fulfill the purpose that God ordained for marriage, for it to, uh, to reflect the, the relationship that exists between Christ and the church. God bless you all. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Alaisa. So to the ladies, she's saying, don't settle. It doesn't matter your age. And to the gentlemen, please try and outdo yourself so that you make your partner happy. Dr. D, um, you are our next person. What are the words that you want to leave with our children? The Thank ladies, you. the gentlemen who have been with you, what do you want to say to them? Thank you, Dr. D. I must say it's been an amazing experience. And on the first day that we spoke, I was blasted uh, outside the session or um, not quite representing um, the youth on what they want about sex. And I noticed that even in our groups, this topic has been hot uh, with lots of thoughts, um, lots of um, uh, questions, lots of um, uh, arguments around sex. And I am happy to say that um, when I listened to the following week's presentation where men were telling us about their thoughts about having premarital sex, um, I hope that every lady listened to that. If you didn't, please go back and listen to it. Dr. D, everyone, mm -hmm. please carry on. We had lost you for a bit. Okay, so while sex is good and everyone wants to have it, uh, what I said on the first day about women, which I want to repeat is that everyone wants to have sex and it's good, but women want, want to have sex in their uh, safety, in their security of relationships. And some unfortunately will actually give in thinking that they are securing the relationship. So giving into sex so as not to get uh, so as not to lose the men. But um, I hope you are clear, ladies, that um, the men say they will have sex. They will ask for it. They will demand it. They will negotiate. But when they are done, you are like chewed gum. They are done with you. And they are not going to be looking out to marry you. I hope those lessons are clear. It's, it's painful, but uh, those lessons are, are, are important. Then uh, in terms of um, what ladies expect from, from men, one of the things that we highlighted last time was uh, looking at um, uh, Abraham's, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which tells us that there are basic needs that people ex that, that every human being needs in life. So these basic needs include sex, include food, and include accommodation. Uh, women are expecting their men to, 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 to provide that, but that's just the basic. They are actually expecting more. Um, so women are expecting security, they're expecting, um, so security is a relationship that's lifelong. That's what they are expecting. And if you are men enough, you should be able to provide that. You should be able to look for, you should be able to make sure that you are well established enough to be able to, you know, um, take care of not just the woman, but everything that comes along with you. This includes taking care of your in-laws, taking care of uh, the clan. In whatever way as a man, those are some of the things that uh, we are expecting. I'm expecting to, when I have a road traffic accident, I'm expect, expecting my men to come there like a knight in flying armor 
come and rescue me, pull the car off the road, do all the stuff. That's what we are expecting from men. But we are also expecting higher things. We're expecting companionship. We are expecting uh, that you will give your woman wings to fly. That's what we said. A real man gives his, his woman wings to fly. So this means that you allow your woman to be the best that they can be in every aspect, um, uh, whether it be academically, spiritually, whatever way, without feeling uh, that you are in a competition because it's not a competition, it's making the best out of your woman. So um, we expect that a real man will actually improve his woman, his, his, his lady in every way. If you found uh, with Oliver, we are expecting that you are going to support her uh, so that she becomes the best that she can uh, and not um, feel threatened and squash your dreams so that she's entirely dependent upon you. That's, that's not right. And when you die, people then mourn for her because she is helpless. No, we are expecting that you are living behind a, a fully fledged empowered woman who can take care of even you if anything goes wrong. Because we realize that so many things can go wrong besides death. You can become incapacitated from a road traffic accident from the different ailments that are there. Uh, you need to make sure that your wife can not only take care of herself, but of, her, of the children and of you as well. Now, concerning um, the um, fantasies that people have, uh, our take home message was, you know what? No marriage is made in heaven. Uh, no one is perfect in any relationship because you are not even perfect. So we are not even expecting that our, our, our spouses are going to be perfect, but we can still live a happy life. Despite the differences, despite the challenges, um, we can. Uh, so my, the take home phrase was work with what is there, which means accept your person just the way he is or the way she is, including where she comes from, including her background, and not to turn around and use their background, uh, use that to fight them or to put them down, but work with, with what is there and also make what is their work. You can actually make a difference. There are women that we know who came into um, families which had so much dispute, who did not speak to each other, but um, they came in there and made what was their work. That's what we are expecting. Uh, that's, that's what we said, instead of expecting a bed of roses, expecting everything perfect, no, uh, whatever comes, let's work with that. But for you to not be shocked as you get into marriage, we emphasized that this is the time to open your eyes wide and that we should not, as our Shona saying says, this is not the right time to be closing your eyes. This is the time to be opening your eyes twice, twice, three times. Because when you get in there, there is no reverse. Uh, I, I feel saddened when I see some, some comments that people post on the group um, uh, arguing. The men told us that la last time that this is a fact. I chew you, I don't care for you. So if you argue, you are doing this at your own demise. And I hope you get there with eyes open any red flags, anything, don't think that you can change someone. His mother failed to change him. He's probably struggling to change himself. You cannot change yourself. So expect that whatever you're struggling with may actually be more, it may actually multiply. And when you walk in, you need to have been prepared to live with that which doesn't work. Finally, we say that uh, marriage does not mean that you lose your identity. If anything, it should mean that you flourish you become the best. And that does not mean that you are expecting your spouse to take you to heaven. It's your responsibility. So if you find him being spiritual, maybe more than you, thank God. But if he's not, or if she's not, it's your responsibility to work with what is there and make what is their work. Do your best to take care of your uh, spirituality so that you and your spouse and your family and your children can go to heaven. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. D. I like that you said courtship is not the time to be closing your eyes. 
open them twice, thrice, and, and make sure you see what is before you. And then I also like the, if he hasn't put his ring on it, don't give it up to the guy. Simple as that, no matter what they say. And when these guys want sex, they're going to switch talk you. If he hasn't put his ring on it, don't give it up. Thank you very much, Dr. D. And uh, I've seen a question which says, this sounds like a farewell. Yes, this is a farewell of sorts. We are wrapping up the past six, six weeks of the session that we've had. Um, and we just want to take the key nuggets from the last uh, six lessons that we had. We will allow just a few questions at the end of the nuggets from our presenters. So if you have questions that you think need to be uh, dealt with that may not have been dealt with from the previous uh, sessions, please write them out, we'll take note, and then we'll make sure we deal with them. Next, I have seen that uh, Uncle, Uncle Ivan, could you be the first gentleman, Uncle Ivan, to come in and give us your nuggets, the key take home message for all of us. Uncle Ivan. Okay. Uh, Uncle Ivan seems to be having problems. Maybe we could ask Elder Munya to come in. Elder Mutema, could you come in? Elder Mutema, you are on mute. Please unmute and speak to us. Thank you, Mrs. Machanda. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you and see you. Oh, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we want to thank God for the time we have had. And I want to thank all the guys and the ladies who are joining in for this uh, seminars. May God bless you for your endeavor to have happy homes, happy marriages, happy courtships. May God really bless you. We are always praying for you and uh, we wish you we wish you very well. So I am going to um, just to highlight some of the things that I think these uh, take home points. Some of the items have been raised by uh, Dr. D and Dr. Uh, Dr. Eliza, but allow me to say to, to the ladies, I wanted to say, um, before you get in any relationship, uh, please do your homework. Background matters. Not that you're going to judge someone uh, because of his background, but background really matters. It will help you not to be surprised tomorrow. It will help you not to be surprised in the future. It will help you to make an, a very well-informed decision. Uh, so please do your homework very well. There are some sisters who, when they are being asked out, there are some sisters who, when they are in relationships, they forget that the proposed guy does not live as an island. Uh, so please do your homework very well. Um, uh, try to ask those who stay with the person. Uh, if you don't have anyone who you know who stays around the person's neighborhood, at least ask someone who's mature. Ask someone who is God-fearing. Ask someone who has your interest at heart. Uh, open to them, open to her, open to him. If you are blessed with God-fearing parents, please consult with them. If you are blessed with God-fearing peers or someone who has an interest at heart, open up to them and tell them. Uh, I always say to, to, to my young girls at home, at church, even at work, that uh, whenever someone asks you out, please tell me. I, I don't need 20 or 30 minutes with a guy to see if he's serious or not, you know? A man cannot lie to another man when pushed in a corner, especially when it comes to these uh, social issues. So I want to encourage to all my young sisters out there, please do your homework, please do your homework. There is nothing new under the sun. Get someone who has your best interest at heart and tell them what you're going through. Uh, tell them, show them the charts, at least open up to someone. I uh, don't ever think that the whole world hates you there is someone out there who's willing to assist you. So I wanted to say, please ask, do your homework, do a background checkup, 
you know, when, when even parastate house, before they engage someone, they do a serious background checkup. What more when it comes to marriage, which is more serious uh, than our, uh, our day-to-day work. Uh, the second point I wanted to say, please seek God first. Uh, marriage is spiritual. You have a relationship with God. You cannot love someone before you learn to love God. Love comes from God. So please, before you get into any relationship, uh, develop a relationship with God because uh, the duty of a woman is to respect the man. The duty of a woman is to submit. And no one who doesn't have Christ, no one who cannot submit to Christ can submit to a human being because a human being can be messed up. A human being can be so deceptive. A human being can be so imperfect. So we can only learn to submit from Christ. So I wanted to say as the second point to my young sisters, please learn to love God first. Develop your relationship with God. Uh, The third point to my young sisters, I wanted to say, please empower yourself. Yeah, Empower yourself. I I, I wish we had time. I'll tell you my own personal experiences from my relatives. Um, They are, I I have relatives who were married to, to, to fairly rich guys who when they passed away within within a year all the wealth was gone simply because uh the woman was not empowered so uh i want to say to the young ladies please empower yourself though you might not have form four though you might not have a level you might not have a first degree or master's degree but empower yourself empower yourself mentally empower yourself spiritually empower yourself uh uh, physically empower yourself in all aspects uh, uh, we talk of the three h's of true education empower yourself in the head empower yourself in the heart empower yourself in the hand you know every woman should be empowered mentally she should be empowered emotionally she should be empowered even in having a skill you might be married to someone who has a nice house a nice car who's coming from a rich background but you don't know your tomorrow here eh? You don't even know where you end up in five years. You might not even die. You might be there, but you don't know where you will end up in terms of your in-laws. So make sure you empower yourself. Be prepared for any situation. You don't know your, your, your tomorrow. So please, ladies, out of love from your bigger brother, please empower yourself. Before you get in a relationship, before you get married, make sure you are empowered. Your parents might not have sent you to school. They might have failed to send you to university. That's not an excuse. Empower yourself. There are skills that you can do. You have mentors. You have the Mrs. Machando, Mrs. Machando Senior, Mrs. Mbiriri. You do have some other women who have made it out there. Ask them. Let them be your female mentors. Empower yourself, especially before you get in any relationship. Uh, Then lastly, to the ladies, I wanted to say, you know, in the eyes of a man, when a man looks at a woman, he classifies every woman into two groups, a marrying type and a dating type. So when a guy asks you out, in his mind, he has already registered that this is someone to date with or this is someone to marry. So when someone comes to you, I really want you ladies to ask yourself, am I on the marrying type or am I on the dating type? And be blunt with yourselves, be blunt with even the guys. Uh, definitely if they ask you, if if you're going to ask them bluntly, they're going to tell you, no, I want to marry you. But I'm telling you as your older brother, when every man sees a young lady, she's put in one of the two cages, the marrying type or the dating type. Unfortunately, most most people who who are put on the dating type, they they never get into the into the uh, uh, marrying cage here. Yeah? That's why on Twitter, on social media, everywhere, ladies, they always put these funny stickers, funny posters to say, guys, why do you propose to girls, uh, to, 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 to this type of girls, when, when you want to get married, you then marry the other type? It's because every man, when he sees a lady, he puts them in one of the two cages. So ladies, uh, when someone comes to you, you need to know there is one, one of the two cages You are in one of the two cages and please do your homework so that you find out. And when you then ask someone, like I said previously, when you then do your homework, you are are guided properly to know where of the two cages you are in. I wish you well, my sisters. And to the guys, just three points. Number one, I wanted to say marriage is spiritual, guys. Uh, We prepare marriage when we're doing courtship. So courtship is is a pre-run of marriage. And for us to do well in our courtship, for us to do well in marriage then, I I need you to understand that this is a spiritual game. 
And you, we can only win it when we develop our spiritual backbones. So I wanted to say to the guys, before you get in any relationship, just like I say to the sisters, please build your spiritual stamina. Have a serious relationship with God. Worse when you get married. When you get married, you're going to uh, uh, face many spiritual warfare, many spiritual hiccups, many spiritual issues that you're going to face. Once you have a good spiritual backbone, you are home and dry. Even if you don't have millions, but when your lady sees that you are a true house priest, you are a true patriarch, like Abraham, they will respect you even in your penniless state. I'm not saying be penniless. I'm saying when life happens, when life knocks you down, when COVID happens, when things are so bad, when you have a good spiritual stamina, somewhere, somehow God will sell you through and your lady is bound to respect you because at the end of the day, it's about your spiritual stamina more than anything else. There are people who have so much money, but because their spiritual stamina is a bit weak, because the spiritual backbone is messed up, they are regretting on, on a daily basis. Number two, gents, marriage is a tall order. I also need you to get empowered as a man. Have a skill that you can do. You might be a doctor, you might be an engineer, you might be a lawyer, but as a man, have a skill that you can do. For life can happen, you know? Life can happen overnight. Have a skill, have something that you can do with your hands. Have something that you can do as a side hustle. You have a second income. You remember the other time we talked in Proverbs, the Bible says you have seven, even eight streams of income. So gents, please get empowered, empower yourselves physically, empower yourself physically. If we had time, we'll talk about, you know, the sexual life in marriage. Many people are realizing when it's too late that how you take care of yourself physically, the health laws, how you take care of yourself physically before you get married affects your sexual life when you then get married. So please take care of your physical life. Be a man. Work out yourselves. Not only, you know, going to the gym and so forth, but do productive exercise. Get into the garden. It's not a messy, uh, 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 it's not a messy thing to do. Get yourself empowered. Empower yourself physically. Empower yourself mentally. Empower yourself uh, spiritually. Empower yourself emotionally. Get yourself skilled up. Empower yourself. You know, our role model is Jesus Christ. And Luke 2 verse 52 tells us that you grew mentally, physically, socially, mentally, uh, and even spiritually. You grew in all aspects of a man. And as a man, before you get in any relationship, where still before you get in marriage, make sure you have built all the aspects of a man. Empower yourself. And number three, the last one to boys, I want to motivate you guys. I want to encourage you by saying God is still as men. The world is full of boys, but few men are there. But the world is looking for men and God still has men. And I want to say to the gents that are listening, be a cut above the rest. Be a man. Hey? The, the, the world is running out of men, men who are courteous, men who are gentle, men who, who are useful. Be that one man. Go out there, look for mentors who can help you. Be it at church, be it at work, be a man. God still has men. God has men who are not beating their girlfriends. God still has married men who are not beating their wives. God still has men who have, who have never slept a woman. God still has men who are faithful. God has men who are courteous. God still has men today because there are men out there who think that, uh, uh, good men are gone. No, 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 no. God still has a few good men who are out there. As I close, I want to say to those who are in relationships, to those who are dating, those who are quoting, number one, pray to God that if the relationship is not from God, let God allow the relationship to break up because you don't want to trod on a rod that is not being led by God. So get your girlfriend, go to Chicken Inn, go to Nando's or go to Arari Gardens, hold hands together and earnestly pray to God and say, God, if this relationship was not founded on you, if this relationship is not led by you, may this relationship break in a nice way. Remember when you talked about Joseph the other time. So number one, seriously, uh, pray to God with your girlfriend, with your boyfriend, to those that are in relationship, ask God for his guidance and honestly tell him, God, I love X, I love Y. But if it's not your will, please break this relationship. But if it's your will, please protect this relationship despite what's happening. Number two, start talking about life. Start talking about accommodation. Where are you guys going to stay? Start talking about kids. How are you going to take care of your kids? Start talking about your religious life. 
she might be from Anglican, she might be from Salvation, though it's not a good thing to mix up religions. But per adventure, you, you are already in a relationship and you have mixed up relationships. Start talking about that for that seriously matters. Start talking about your investments. How are you going to invest? Are you going to get into farming? Are you going to do bonds? Are you going to start talking about life? Stop wasting life on Twitter and on social media, discussing nonsense things. Start talking about life in your relationship. It is when you start talking about life, that's where you're going to see whether that relationship really is going to stand the test of times or it's just one of those uh, funny relationships. Then the third one, uh, as you discuss, as you start talking about life, obviously you're going to discuss about your wedding. Start thinking life after the wedding for, you know, up to the wedding, it's all drama. You know, reality starts after the wedding. So start discussing life after the wedding. And as you gather up funds, start gathering up funds after the wedding. Don't spend all your resources uh, on the wedding for life starts after the wedding. Then the last one, stay pure. There are God's blessings when a couple stays pure please stay pure. I know sex can be good. Sex is so wonderful. Ladies, when a man asks sex from me, men who always ask for sex to those that are in relationship, men who always ask, but when you stand for what is right, your man will respect you. Even when a lady asks for sex, she's not asking because she's head over use about sex, but she has heard from your friends that, no, no, you need to give your man sex and so forth. So when a man asks for sex, ladies, stand for what is right. Gents, when a woman asks for sex, she doesn't really mean it. She has heard, mostly it's peer pressure, stand for what is right. They are God's blessings when a couple stands pure. And to those who have messed up in the past, take time to heal. Don't rush into a relationship. Take time. Do a root cause analysis. See where you messed up. See where you fall. Take time to repent to God. Take time to God. Ask God for forgiveness and ask God for strength to pick your broken pieces and move on. Develop a relationship to, uh, with God. To those who are over 25, over 35, and sometimes over 40, who think that time is past, like what Dr. Mbiriri says, I want to say, be patient with God. God is not bound with time limits. There is no accident to God. Everything is by design. There is no accident to God. Even when you get to 35, when you get to 40, take time to be with God. Build your relationship with God. As you are waiting for God to open up an opportunity for him or for her, work on yourself. Be the right person. Don't look for the right girlfriend or the right boyfriend, but make sure you are building yourself to be the right boyfriend or the right girlfriend. Ask yourself, if I was a woman, what kind of a woman would I want? Then start being the, the, the right person. Ask yourself, don't ask yourself the question to say, what am I going to get in a relationship? But rather ask yourself, what am I bringing in a relationship? So even when you get to 30, when you get to 35, ask yourself, what am I going to bring in the relationship? And finally, lastly, but not least, if per adventure you're going to break up, Guys, be a Joseph. Don't put it on Twitter. Don't put it on WhatsApp. Don't put it, you know, don't put it on billboards. Don't go to Ask Land and ask uh, for a billboard to say we are finally broken up and, you know, write to Tyne about it. No, no, no. Be a Joseph. Put it away privately. Put it away silently. Do it nicely. Don't burn all the bridges. For so that you don't fall into it, but do it nicely. Oh, and all has been said and done. May God bless you. Marriage affects this life and the life to come. May God bless you and may you do it very well. Back to you, my guru. Thank you so much. Yes, I can see the elder is very passionate about this. If he was to be given an opportunity, I am sure he would have started this series over again. So he says, due diligence. Make sure you do your due diligence before you fall into marriage with a person and empower yourselves. But I liked particularly the fact that he says to the men, please, this is a spiritual thing. Make sure your spiritual stamina is up there. Don't just fall into marriage. You are expected to be the priest there and you fail as a, free, as a priest. Uncle Ivan, it's over to you now. I'm asking you to unmute. Yes. Um Am I okay? I think I now I can. Be, okay, I think I think for for a change you have not been fair to me because I was trying to unmute, but it was it kept on telling me 
the problem is that I think I logged in with two devices, so you had admitted the other one. I was trying on the other one, but well, uh, to the young people here, I'm so excited to be back. And just like you, I can't believe we've come to the end of this uh, powerful, life-changing uh, program uh, that has been brought to us uh, by our, our leaders there. But um, all things normally come to an end. But I want to believe uh, Mama Chando can confirm this is not the last time you're going to see us. We're going to come back with a bang. And definitely, when you come back, bring friends and their friends and their other friends to come and listen to these life-changing uh, programs. Adam Tim, I think I, I have a feeling uh, so I have to say this on, on the platform. It's just a light moment, but I'm just thinking that it must have been you who jinxed me so that I don't unmute my mic because everything that I had on my, on my list is everything that you said. So to the young people who were here, whatever Eldam Tema said is what I wanted to say. So uh, God bless you and God be with you. But let me borrow words from my literature teacher when I was in high school. He says, sometimes when you're given an opportunity to speak, uh, it is good enough uh, Please don't, 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 uh, don't get excited about this and just get this one. It's just a light moment. So my literature teacher would always say, whenever you present, please do it as if you are, do, uh, you are presenting a miniskirt. A miniskirt is short enough uh, to arouse the feelings and long enough to cover the essentials. So because uh, Elder Mutema and the good doctors have already done the basis for me, I'm just going to do a summary which will be very short, sweet, nice, and I hope you'll enjoy every moment of it. And I want to say uh, to the young people who are here, please take to heart everything that you have heard. I remember it was Mary, the mother uh, of Jesus, who always used to uh, remind people that whatever he said, please keep it to heart. Quickly, let me start with the girls. Girls, uh, my point number one is I just want to let you know that you are special. I mean, there's no one like you. You are just you. You are special. Well, I'm told that a diamond or any other gem that is so special, you have to dig deep to access that. You just don't pick a diamond on the road. Come on, don't be cheap. You are so special. You are, I mean, you are so special that God calls you the apple of his eye. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, you don't find gold diamond on the street. I want to go back to what was up here. Be expensive because you are special. Come on, look to the Proverbs 21 um, woman, of course, be a Proverbs 21 girlfriend. You must be as, as, as special as a ruby. If you're not as special as a ruby, you become rubbish. So the opposite of ruby is rubbish. If you don't become virtuous, you become vicious. So you need to know who you are in Christ. You are so special, made in the image, in the image of God. Number three, be industrious. Uh, you know what? I think that the reason why most girls are being taken advantage of is because you're waiting for the guy to be the prince in shining armor. When he comes, he's like a prince in shining armor. But wait until he has given you enough for you to uh, let loose everything. Then you see that, no, 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 no. I have been, I've been cheated. But in all this, I still want you to remember that you are special and make sure that you are, I mean, come on, if people have to come all the way from China to come and look for diamonds, they have to bring ve the very best machinery. People must have done an expensive part for them to access the sweetness that is in you. Don't allow people to just take your sickness away. You are special, but show yourself by becoming industrious. You know, when you become industrious, people will know that you're not a pushover. They won't ask anything and everything when they want it because they know you are, I'm not just saying be independent in everything else. I'm sure the other uh, counselors have covered the spiritual part and what we need to do in terms of what we need to present ourselves. But I'm saying in all this, don't forget the uh, point that God has actually taken time to make you and he considers you the very best of everything that he has prepared. So be industrious so that men don't take advantage of you. I mean, why should... Uh, I think it was only yesterday I was driving and I was listening to 326, I think it's done by KVG. Um, she was saying some of the ladies now are, are getting frustrated that people give the money as if they can't make money of their own. I mean, this is the women we are trying to look for. Women who would actually say, hey, don't worry about the house we are building. For you, you start from, from the window level going upwards. The foundation and the roof is mine. Why? Because you have become industrious. And there's no way it has been said that opportunities have been made a plain for men also. Even women, you can do great and mighty things. Let me say, be a fit helper. Um, you know, the Bible says, 
be the helper, but I'm just saying, don't just be a helper, be the fit helper. You know, you should be like an enzyme. Oh, let me not go into the doctoral uh, aspect in case I say the wrong things, but just be like a puzzle. A puzzle needs pieces that are not the same. The difference they have makes them uh, collaborate, amalgamate and come together. Don't just be a helper, be the fit helper, the one who is needed. You know, you know when a guy says to God every day in the morning, thank you for the woman that you gave me, because I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give you, uh, for me, I'm not even ashamed to say this. You know what? I'm a, I'm a very, I'm a spender. I don't know how to keep money. But God gave me a woman who is a very good, uh, of course, she's a chartered accountant. I used to have problems with her when she used to ask me for a seat for bread. But now I understand why, why she is a fit helper. I can now look at things that we have actually put together as assets simply because I got a woman who was able to tell me when I was spending too much. She once said to me, hey, sometimes being a pastor, God didn't say you must give away everything. You must also keep some things for you. And I was like, hey, what kind of a shepherd is this? But I understood later on that when the seven years of hunger come, I would look back and say, hey, thank you, man. You were able to make sure that I, so be a fit helper. So that when a man wakes up in the morning, they will say, thank you, God, for the woman that you have given me because she knows the direction I need to take. Let me uh, conclude on the girls by saying this. Uh, ask another <laughs> Gezai, men like women who are, I mean, you don't have to be pretty to look presentable. God has given women a sense of beauty and that's what men don't have. So if we don't find it in you, there's no, it's not a general of my I mean, we don't have another place to be because the one who was given the sense of beauty is the woman. Don't go and bath. Don't just use water to drink. Use water to bath. Use water. To, I mean, you know, it's just so nice to sit with a girl who smells so good. Who, I mean, who is presentable? Sometimes you don't have to wear uh, expensive clothes. Kotamai Botika or the Pedigas Mbero. It's not going to look as really nice if you know how to do your things proper. So we're not saying do things expensively, but we're just saying have that sense of beauty. I mean, when when Adam saw Eve, he says, hey, 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 this is flesh of my flesh. And uh, come on, girls. Now. Uncle, I think. Take care of yourself. I'll conclude with boys and girls. Today, my wife asked me, but why are you putting on a suit and a tie? I said, hey, today we are concluding things. And I want the guys and the girls to take me serious. So boys, listen to me. Number one, if uh, I think Eldam Tema summarized everything else, but my charge to you is what David says to Solomon. Be thou a man. Hey, do, I don't know what I'm going to no, no, no. You must not ask. Don't go to ask land for people to tell you that you are the father. Let it exude from how you carry yourself around the house. People must just know that there's a father when you are around. Don't even ask people uh, to, to, tell, to, to confirm what you want them to confirm. Show it. You know, it's just like love. Love is not only expressed in words, it's expressed in deed and in action. Actually, when it is expressed in action in deed, it is more acceptable. So when we want to see the man in the house, it's not about how much you ask us, but it's how much you show us to do the things. Remember, you're the provider, you are the protector. I mean, everything that God put in what is called the ecclesiastical father is what we expect from you. Saka, so, uh, I think Elder Mtema said this once, people don't want you to see the husband in you when you are married. Let it start even when you are dating so that people would actually say, hey, Abandas one Niram Rume, even before you go and pay the bride or price. So don't forget in anything and everything, be thou a man, show yourself a uh, man enough, not in words by asking, but in what you do. Number two, Jabez never complained about his situation. We are tired of boys who are telling us things are not okay because of where I was born, the country where I live, the leadership, the government, the pastors that I have, the friends that I have. You are your own person. Barack Obama once said, be the change that you expect to see. In it. I mean, you have been given the propensity, the tenacity, the greed for you to change the situation around you. And the owners are upon you for you to become an impact player, to fill the gap and do what is expected of you. So boys, we don't want you to give us an excuse. We want to give us a solution. You know, imagine, imagine, Dr. Opinda Mu, Mu Hospital Ward, 
you make the situation worse. Men don't cry to their women. I think we spoke about it last time. Muruma is a problem solver. Solve the problem and give us the solution to the problems that we have. And remember, still on problems, every problem is an opportunity for you, for people to see that you're an impact player. You can solve problems. In fact, you know, where there are problems that you know, that's what women do when they meet. They talk about their men because they have solved the problem. So be a solver, a, a problem solver, and don't allow situations to uh, dictate who you are. Change the situation around you. That's what they say about salt. When salt comes in, things change. Things change. So be a person who changes things around around uh, themselves. Finally, to to the boys, I want to say, you know, there's a statement, I think it was Mahatma Gandhi who said, there are three groups of people in life. People who know that things have happened. People who were there when things were happening. And the final group, people who make things happen. Hey, don't be people who see things happening. Don't be people who witness and know that things have happened, but be people who make things happen. I'm talking about within your situation. Always have something up your sleeve. The spiritual part, thank you, Elder Tema. I think I cannot uh, overemphasize what you have said. Now to you, both the boys and the girls, my final words to you. Number one, be a value adder. In your relationship, make sure you're adding value. I don't know whichever trajectory you're going to take, whatever aspect of your life in your dating. And when you finally become a couple, make sure your availability means you are adding value to the relationship. Finally, finally, whether you are the girl, or whether you're the boy, in your relationship, may the partner or people around you confuse you for Jesus. God bless you as we meet again to discuss more and more nuggets about how we can make our lives meaningful and we can draw closer to each other as we draw closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless you. We love you and God take care. Remember, you are special in God's eye. Over to you, my guru. God bless you. Thank you so much, Uncle Ivan. I, I love the way you emphasize that women should bath. We heard. Thank you. We will do so. But those are beautiful nuggets. And thank you so much, Uncle Ivan. Um, I don't think there's any other of our presenters who is available with us today. So I am hoping that uh, within the next five minutes or so, we will be able to deal with one or two or three questions that you may post. I haven't seen any questions yet. What I have seen are questions to do with this series. I can confirm that the series will come again. Um, we will take a break. We need to rethink the format. We need to think about a number of things. We will come back and we will make sure everybody knows. Everybody who was attending this will know. But for the meantime, we need to go back to the drawing back board and decide on how best to come back with this uh, series. Any question? Any question that anybody has? Um, because if there is if there is no question it actually takes us to the end of our series um okay there's a question there i asked about a young man there must be oh okay all right no that's not a question um elder machando was there when we started but I'm not sure what's happened to his network. Um, I can't see any question. If anybody can see a question, please just raise your hand so that you bring it to my attention. Oh, there was a question. Um, as a young man looking for a wife, I'm sure there are some godly women in this Zoom meeting. Will there be a time after this? Um, the time that we had set apart was for questions, not necessarily for networking. So I think, okay, message is coming in. All right, at what point uh, do you start to empower your other half? 
And uh, two questions. So does it mean looking good uh, can keep a man for you? As in bathing, looking good, smelling good, like um, Uncle Ivan was talking about. So um, at what point do you start to empower your other half whilst you are still dating or when you are engaged? Okay, I will ask um, Uncle Ivan, I would ask you to make sure you attend to the part that asks about can bathing uh, actually can bathing actually keep your men with you? All right, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, you know what? Um, I'm I'm very honest on this one. I used to be a pastor in in Weza a couple of years back. I will not mention the name, but I actually witnessed a marriage that broke because the husband was complaining that the woman is untidy. Um, mm. He could not even he could not even fathom the fact that she can go up to eleven o'clock without bathing in the. I mean, I'm literally telling you of a sad situation where a marriage literally fell. Now you look at the woman. She was blessed with all the assets, if you know what I'm talking about. Whether if you're just a geography relation, she has the contour region, she had all the mountains, everything that you would desire in a woman. But she failed to make the things that were very beautiful, attractive to the one that she had espoused to himself. So I want to say, sadly, I don't think this is the only marriage that is actually ended because someone failed to take care of themselves. So I just want to say to, I'm speaking now as a man, I'm speaking as a man. Even when I go to places with my wife, I am not even ashamed to point and hug and show people my wife because she represents me. I mean, in as much as I represent her. So I would want also to be proud. You know, uh, there's a verse in the Bible you find in the book of Songs of Solomon. It says, catch us the little foxes for they destroy the vine. Many a times we are so worried about the big things and for negate the small things, thinking that ah, it's just too petty. Kuto geza askana, just bathing, smelling nice, actually enhances uh, the mood for a romantic day, for a lovely thing. So yes, we need to keep yourself beautiful as you have been even before we met, because it is also part and parcel of what constitutes to the ingredients that eventually gives us that beautiful, that beautiful cake. I think that's what I wanted to mention. Uh, other counselors can you. come in. Uh, thank you, thank you, Uncle regard. Ivan. I think that's clear enough. And then Elder uh, Mutema, uh, all right. Uh, I wanted Elder Mutema to answer this one. At what point does a man start empowering a woman? And then I'll come to Dr. D after Elder Mutema. Yala? Yes, we can, can hear you. Can you hear me, um, At what point does the man or should the men start to empower the girlfriend when they are still dating or after marriage? <clears throat> So, so, so uh, dating, fine. I don't like the term dating. I want to call it courtship. Courtship. Uh, when, when, it's, when it's properly done, you have already done your homework. You, have, you, you, you are cocksure that this is the one. You don't mind investing in her because you have done all that you can. You have prayed about it and you are now preparing for marriage. When, when, when courtship is done properly, when you are now in, in, in the courtship time, when she's now your former girlfriend, you have done all the introductions, or oh, by the way, they, they, it, it's, it's not right to court someone without the parents or the guidance knowing. Uh, that's a topic for another day. So if mm -hmm. it's done properly, the moment that she has accepted you, the moment that you've accepted um, uh, are here and both of you are at the same page, that moment she deserves a right to be empowered. And you as a man, you are now taking the responsibilities. You are training yourself to be a father. The moment mm. that you're in a relationship, the fact that she, you now deserve your attention, she also deserves the empowerment. So you are not going to wait until you get married. You, you, the moment that you're now in a relationship, allow me to say she deserves your support of being empowered. You don't have to be selfish to say, ah, what if we break up? 
you just have to do your part to say at this point you you i always say treat her as if she's going to be your wife so treat her nicely just do what you want others to be doing to your wife if per adventure you're going to break up so okay. empower her the moment you're in a relationship if she's not going to be your wife at least you are empowering her for someone we call it teamwork it means someone <laughs> else in in Beijing or in China mm. or in Gogo and Budiriro is oh, also benefit. empowering your woman mm. and that's mm. teamwork you, you you need to be selfless empower her act as if she's the one that you're going to marry so the problem is most of us when we date when we court you are almost 90% uh assured that you're not going to get married to her that's why you don't empower her but when mm. you have the mentality to say let me empower her I, i'm sure that if god if 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 it's god's will this is the one that i'm going to get married to the moment you are in your first year of the relationship you already are already empowering her spiritually you already empowering her any other aspects of uh, empowering if per adventure it's not god's will you are doing it for the brother b next door Uh, the moment you are doing that to her someone else is also empowering your woman and at the end of the day all women are empowered and we have a happy society and a happy zimbabwe thank you so somebody had asked does that mean i should pay their varsity fees if they are struggling and i suppose you've already covered that because you've said yes go ahead if you think this is the right woman and whether it works out or it doesn't go ahead thank you very much elder mtema dr d you have been dying to say something but i also want you to attend to the question uh, a statement was said here that men should solve problems what sort of problems please give examples dr d thank you so um, i just want to pass through by the uh, the, the first the initial questions uh, guys I don't understand how someone asks if if bathing alone can keep a man when we've been talking about so, so many, many things. things. Yes. So many things, mm. my sister or my brother. Mm. And I just want to say, of course, bathing alone does not keep a woman, but not bathing definitely <laughs> can destroy friendship. Mm. Definitely. Um, then on investing in each other, I'm happy that um Elder Mtema keeps saying if it doesn't work out because it may not work out, which is why when you are investing, don't invest with your soul like um, women giving in to sex because we are mm -hmm. almost made. There are relationships that have been destroyed on the wedding eve. So um, don't sell your soul and don't invest to then make it, um, to use it as blackmail. Mm -hmm. You can do me after all that I've done to you, you can do this to me after all this I've done to, to you. You know, if you are investing, know that you are investing and it's good, but things may not work out and you don't have to hold your, 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 your girlfriend or your boyfriend at ransom because you invested. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, somebody else is investing in, in, your, in, in, your, in the person that you're going to. Mm -hmm. What sort of problems can people solve? So to begin with, we are looking at the attitude. The attitude of problem solving looks at um, issues, not to find who is at fault, but to find how, what the problem is and how it can be solved. So mm -hmm. there are so many facets of life that we can talk about. Um, we can talk about solving, solving problems, say about poverty, Uh, what are you putting in place? Even if you are empowered to, to provide for the family, but what else are you doing to help your spouse also to be, to, to be a provider? Uh, if there is conflict, um, what needs to be put in place? So you are like um, having this um, a bird's eye view on being able to identify what the problem is, not who it is and how things can be put in place. There are some people who complicate things, uh, people who are not keen to confront issues when they happen. There are men who will uh, get into their cocoons, they will hide into their shells, get into their shells when there are issues. So we are looking for men who can say, come, let us reason together. What is the problem? What do we need to do? How can we do it? 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. D. Dr. Alaisa, are you still around? If you could just raise your hand so that I see you. Dr. Alaisa. Okay, we don't seem to have Dr. Alaisa anymore. Let me check one more time. Yes, there you are. Dr. Alaisa, could you speak to the question that has come up? Question says, should we ask about sex when we are still dating? Should we ask about, I suppose they are asking about um, mileage, uh, whether or not you have done it, whether or not you'd want to have it before marriage or stuff. But the question is, should we ask about sex before marriage? Dr. Alaisa, over to you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I think that it is important that people discuss these issues. Uh, for example, to begin with, you need to discuss the boundaries that you have with regards to sex in your, in your relationship. This should be done early on. Because sometimes people don't discuss that uh, issues about uh, sex, whether we are going to be engaging or we don't. Like there are some well-meaning girls, they know that I don't want to engage in sex, but they just keep quiet. And for some reason, they are found in a circumstance which will uh, endanger them or which will, will make it conducive for them to have sex. And it is at that point that they may want to discuss about uh, not having sex, which may not be the right time. So I think setting the boundaries early on in your relationship that uh, for me, uh, I don't do sex in this relationship or for me, my boundaries are this and this. And you discuss when the two of you are still sober-minded, not when you are found somewhere in some spooky corner, that's when you want to say, uh, is this not too much? You no, discuss your boundaries early enough because I don't think we should just uh, say the guy knows that both of us are from church, so we don't engage, we don't indulge mm. in these things. You should not just make that assumption. Don't make that assumption that this, I'm dating an elder, so he knows that we don't indulge. No, discuss about it and tell him mm -hmm. that these are my boundaries. And if he has issues with that, I think it's better for you, for you to clarify so that you know where each of, where each of you stands. And mm -hmm. then when it comes maybe to the issues of um, disclosing whether one is, uh, he has done it before the issues of, of mileage, I guess it is also important that you see, uh, uh, you get to the con uh, conducive time to discuss, to discuss that. Um, and I think what I liked about Do was something that Elder Munya mentioned was when people, when you, when the relationship doesn't work out, be like Joseph, or mm. that you don't parade someone. If you have discussed it and someone has been, has been open enough to discuss that uh, for some reason, A, B, C, or D, I indulged like this, be it a guy or be it a, a girl, I think it's it's a necessary conversation which has to be done at some point, and it's, it's and you should not uh, you should not hide those things until marriage until someone discovers on the wedding night that you were lying to them or something like that. I think it is more dangerous for a person to discover that on the wedding night mm -hmm. that you were not what you portrayed. But at the same time, if if it so happened that someone has gone through that. It's not my duty to move around telling people that this is the reason that I left it. And also, maybe it's not even, it may not, it's may not be the reason why people should not continue their relationship if someone did it before and they've uh, asked God for forgiveness and they've left that. Thank you very much, Dr. Laisa. The last questions I have, uh, I think, merged two questions there on long distance relationships. The first one says, my husband works in Wange, or my boyfriend works in Wange. I am a lecturer at a university. How do I navigate after marriage? Do I go to Wange where there's no university or do I not get married? And the other question is, how do you make sure that a 
person is interested in you, in you personally, and not in the visa that you might have, and are not looking for a holiday, so to speak, on, on, on your visa. I'll give this, these two questions that have been merged into one to Dr. Uncle Ivan, and I am sorry to say this, uh, this is the last question that we will be taking. Uncle Ivan, could you deal with those two questions that I have merged into, into one on long distance relationships? Okay, um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, the good thing is you asked the question and then you answered it. So it's very mm. easy on my, on my behalf because you said if we get married, do I go or I don't even get married? I mean, you've already gotten married. So, <laughs> well, it's just a light moment. Uh, but like I mentioned, you know, uh, long distance, I've never been in a long distance relationship myself, but from what I pick uh, in the streets of people who uh, navigate or march along the long distance relationship, it comes with its own um, challenges. It also comes with its own, um, you know, everything is a pro and a con, but what you need to do is you need to evaluate what is best. You know what? Uh, allow me to just use the story of, uh, of David of him not going to war and what happened when he was away. Look at uh, Adam and Eve. You remember that, you know, people always give reference to this. Like I'm saying, I'm coming from a point where I've not been in a long distance relationship myself. However, I'm just trying to say, it's normally easier to deal with situations when you are together. After you deal with situations, uh, even Dr. D will tell you that when it comes to issues to do with a conflict resolution, it's difficult to solve a conflict when you are not uh, can see the expression and what is within a person. So I would want to suggest and say, sometimes you uh, might have to decide between profession and your marriage. There are people who are in long distance relationship and they attest that it is working. Of course, it comes with a certain things. But remember, the reason why you marry is for companionship, for you guys to be together, to walk the journey, to grow old together, to come to the foot of the cross together. So sometimes he might even, even if he's a man, sometimes you can even then um, uh, come down and say, okay, fine, where I am, there's no university. But where you are, because of the work that I'm doing, I'm a mechanic, there are cars all over. I can still come and fix cars in Gwanda where there's a university. I mean, sometimes it's not only the woman who just does have to sacrifice, even us as men, you have to look at the bigger picture and say, okay, what? Well, the situation requires for us to look at the bigger picture and see what both of us can put in the bucket and then say, okay, fine, we now have something that we can uh, look at together and be able to uh, come up with a resolute answer. Sorry, you know, I got, I got in fascinated by this. What was the second part of the question, uh, my group? The second part was uh, referring to those who are out in the diaspora. How do they know? that the person that they are dating is the right one who is not just looking for a way to get into the UK or the US on, on the strength of their visa because they have married them. How do you make that assessment? How do you make sure that you are not being used as a, as a vehicle to travel hey. from Zimbabwe to another better country? You know, the only person who, the only, the only being that I know who has that capacity to read the heart's mind is God and God alone. Remember, even the Bible says the heart is so deceitful mm -hmm. above all things. However, however, remember, I'm just saying, I mean, you can't, I mean, it's very difficult to judge intention because, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, if for instance, I'm now talking, I'm not only talking about people who are in the diaspora, I'm just talking about me and my wife uh, in the same bed. Sometimes you don't. I mean, you can't have the right intuition and judgment of what exactly they are thinking. So if, if anyone would tell you that, no, this guy is doing this only because they want a visa, it will be very difficult because intentions are so bottled inside that it's very difficult to see. It's like what you have eaten. You know, in, if I eat matemba, if I eat carpenter, if you eat uh, the genoa, it's difficult to see when it's already in the stomach because God has put it in such a divine way that we don't judge intentions and things that are inside. But you know what? Women always say, I said women, if you are a woman, then women always have a, this, I don't even know what to call it, that God has given them to see red flags of certain things that happen to them. And God has given women a sixth sense to actually say, mm, I think this person is only doing this for a BCD, which men have no capacity to see. And you know what? I'll give you for an example. 
my wife used to always tell me that, hey, I don't trust this, the way that this woman is speaking to you. I'm like, ah, come on, you know, I mean, and then later on you, really, you start seeing also the flex that women saw five months before you started seeing them. So for mm -hmm. women, it's actually easier to be able to dictate certain things that are not put out in the plane. I think I would call it a sixth sense that can give you some red flags, uh, but definitely it's difficult to judge intention and motive when someone has not said anything. Thank you, my guru. I think this was a good discussion. I hope to get more discussions later to come. God bless you. Thank you, Uncle Ivan. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this series. I am going to ask Elder Mutema to give us a closing prayer. And before we go, I'm also going to ask Tino, Tino to put either a WhatsApp number or an email address so that anybody who has a topic that they want covered can just pass it on to Tino, to the Bluffhill SDA Church um, uh, contact detail that will be given. So Tino, please take note, give out those contacts so that people are able to just let them let us know what topics they want covered. Elder Mtema, may you please pray for us, pray for each and every youth who is on this platform. All right, shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come before you this afternoon. We want to thank you for your loving kindness. We want to thank you for your love towards us. We want to thank you for the sessions that we have been having over the past weeks. We want to thank you for all the things that we learned and the things that we had to unlearn. I want to pray for the young men and young women who are on this platform right now. I pray, Father, that the mistakes that they have made, you might forgive them. I pray that the plans that they have, I pray, Father, that you might fulfill the dreams and the wishes of their hearts. To those who are in relationships, Father, if the relationships are not from above, I will pray that you might break them in a nice way. To those that are in the right relationships, we pray for protection, Lord. This is an evil world. The devil is not happy when we have the right relationship. So we pray that you might protect all the godly relationships that, that, that we have. To the young men out there, Lord, who are looking for uh, right, the right ladies, we pray, Father, that you might lead them as they search. May they search with the eyes directed unto you. And I pray for the women who are also hoping that one day the right guy will come. I pray that you might be with them. There are evil men out there, Lord. I pray that you might protect them. And I pray, Father, that all the youths who are hoping that one day they will get into marriage. I pray, Father, that you might protect them. And I pray that in the while as they are waiting for that, may they develop their relationships with you. And thank you for the counselors who were on board, who were helping us every now and then. May you bless them. May their marriages uh, be role models to many of us. And once again, Lord, thank you and bless everyone who's here. And even the other youths who could not attend because of lack of data, lack of finances, we pray, Father, that they too might have good lives. When all has been said and done, Lord, we pray that our names might not be raised in the book of life. Once again, thank you, Lord. Be with us, be with our country, and be with our leaders. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We thank you, everyone. May God bless you. Please make sure you utilize the details that you know would have put up on the chat. We love you. Please take care. And yes, love you all. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you. Thank you, you everyone. Bye. Bye.